as we await um, Trump's sentencing in that case, this immunity ruling today from the Supreme Court is at hand. And I'm not a lawyer. Um, it is, as far as I can tell, in my layman's understanding, um, it is as radical as anything I have ever seen from the United States Supreme Court. I can certainly tell you that it is profoundly worse. It is a profoundly worse ruling than even the most pessimistic observers predicted. There was essentially one substantial aspect of immunity for Trump that Trump and his lawyers put to the court that they did not get. That was this sort of internally contradictory, confusing proposal they'd made that a president could only be criminally prosecuted for crimes if you first impeached him in the House and convicted him in the Senate. The implication was that any failed impeachment effort would have effectively immunize that behavior for life. Um, that thing about impeachment being connected in that way to a, a criminal prosecution, the court threw that out as nonsense. But um, they gave him everything else he asked for and more. They gave him immunity in every other way that he asked for it, including for things his own lawyer <laughs> conceded weren't among Trump's official acts as president. Things that Trump's lawyer conceded were private acts were described in today's majority ruling as things for which Trump might nevertheless potentially get immunity. Here's how Justice Sonia Sotomayor put it in her dissent today. She said that the court, quote, refuses to designate any course of conduct alleged in the indictment as private, despite concessions from Trump's counsel. She continues, when asked about allegations that private actors helped implement a plan to submit fraudulent slates of presidential electors to obstruct the certification proceeding, and Trump and a co-conspirator attorney directed that effort, Trump's counsel conceded the alleged conduct by Trump was private. She then says, quote, only the majority, meaning only the majority ruling in the court today, thinks that organizing fraudulent slates of electors might qualify as an official act of the president. In other words, Trump may be even more protected from prosecution on the fake electors thing than even Trump asked for. Justice Sotomayor's dissent is being cited widely today, um, not only because of its heat, it, it is considerably hot, but also because of the light that it sheds on the practical consequences of this ruling from the majority. She says, quote, looking beyond the fate of this particular prosecution, the long-term consequences of today's decision are stark. The court effectively creates a law-free zone around the president, upsetting the status quo that has existed since the founding. This new official acts immunity now lies about like a loaded weapon for any president that wishes to place his own interests, his own political survival, or his own financial gain above the interests of the nation. The president of the United States is the most powerful person in the country and possibly the world. When he uses his official powers in any way under the majority's reasoning, he now will be insulated from criminal prosecution. Orders the Navy's SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival? Immune. Organizes a military coup to hold on to power? Immune. Takes a bribe in exchange for a pardon? Immune. Immune, immune, immune. Let the president violate the law. Let him exploit the trappings of his office for personal gain. Let him use his official power for evil ends. Because if he knew that he may one day face liability for breaking the law, he might not be as bold and fearless as we would like him to be. That's the majority's message today. Even if these nightmare scenarios never play out, and I pray they never do, the damage has been done. The relationship between the president and the people he serves has shifted irrevocably. In every use of official power, the president is now a king above the law. She closes, quote, never in the history of our republic has a president had reason to believe that he would be immune from criminal prosecution if he used the trappings of his office to violate the criminal law. Moving forward, however, all former presidents will be cloaked in such immunity. If the occupant of that office misuses official power for personal gain, the criminal law that the rest of us must abide will not provide a backstop. She says, quote, with fear for our democracy, I dissent. Justice Sotomayor's dissent was joined today by Justice Kagan and Justice Jackson. The three of them, and, and through Justice Sotomayor's writing this dissent, they have at least done us the favor of writing what's kind of a speaking dissent. It, it spells out not in legalese, but in plain English, 
the stark consequences of this ruling today. And to his credit, actually, President Biden did the same tonight at the White House. He said, quote, today's decision almost certainly means there's no limits to what a president can do. This is a fundamentally new principle, and it's a dangerous precedent. The power of the office will no longer be constrained by the law, even the Supreme Court of the United States. The only limits will be self-imposed by the president alone. But there are two practical consequences of this ruling. Uh, that I feel like I need help in understanding tonight. I am worried about both of them, I have to tell you, but I feel like I need um, expert advice in terms of understanding what they really mean. And so I'm going to ask for some help on, on two things in particular. Uh, the first is this, which is not from the dissent, but from the actual ruling. It's, um, it's talking about the part of the federal indictment against Trump for the overthrowing the government stuff or the January 6th stuff, the part of the indictment that relates to him trying to use the Justice Department, trying to employ the Justice Department basically as a tool in his scheme to overthrow the government and hold on to power after he lost the election. On that point specifically, the ruling says this, quote, the indictment's allegations that the requested investigations were shams or proposed for an improper purpose do not divest the president of exclusive authority over the investigative and prosecutorial functions of the Justice Department and its officials. Because the president cannot be prosecuted for conduct within his exclusive constitutional authority, Trump is absolutely immune from prosecution for the alleged conduct involving his discussion, his discussions with Justice Department officials. Absolutely immune from anything related to his discussions with Justice Department officials. My question is, doesn't that mean the president, any president here, is being given overt carte blanche from the court that he or she can tell the Justice Department to do anything for any reason and it can never be reviewed for the life of that president? Because if so, among other things, Richard Nixon would like his presidency back, please. If a, if if everything the pres that happens between a president and his Justice Department is absolutely immune from the criminal law, is absolutely immune from not only the prosecution but investigation by the courts as a potential, potentially criminal matter, that means that the president can do things with the Justice Department that, I mean, what's the limit? My second question is about what happens um, next in that federal case referenced there about January 6th. Um, the justices in the majority today, with, Judge, with Chief Justice Roberts writing for them, said explicitly that they want portions of this case sent back to the district court. So not the part that relates to Trump talking to Justice Department officials, but the other parts of it. They want those parts of the indictment sent back to the district court, meaning to back, to back to Judge Tanya Chutkin's courtroom in Washington, D.C., essentially for her to determine in her courtroom whether or not Trump's, Trump's actions, as described in the indictment, were official and therefore immune, or were they not official, which might mean that charges on those matters can go ahead. What does that mean exactly? What are the justices saying should happen in, in Judge Chutkin's courtroom? And, and when? And what will that look like to an American public that really is actively considering right now whether to send this particular felon back to the White House, thanks to the Republican Party of the United States? Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.